Peace be with you. Welcome to the Institute of All Intelligent Life. My name is Alan Kiesler, and we are continuing our class on extraterrestrial spirituality. We had a little interruption with some other subjects in between, but now returning. I have been talking about Michael Sala's uh, introduction to U.S. government policy on extraterrestrial life. So I did that because I wanted to give a little bit of background. So when I start talking about extraterrestrial spirituality, you will understand that I'm not just coming out of nowhere, but there is plenty of evidence uh, that extraterrestrials have been coming to the Earth, and extraterrestrials have even been contacting the governments of the Earth, especially the United States government, as the leading superpower and first nuclear power on Earth. Um, <clears throat> but now we want to turn a little bit more to extraterrestrial concepts of spirituality. So I'm just going to give a short class and then take a few questions and answers. Uh, we are most interested, of course, in the concept of God. That is the beginning of most discussions of spirituality. So I just will introduce one idea. <clears throat> this is an extraterrestrial uh, concept coming from the Law of One book, books, um, where God is described both as uh, intelligent infinity and also as infinite intelligence. Um, so, but there are two concepts here. One is that God is infinite, and also God is intelligent. So these are two very, very important ideas to understand. Um, people often ask, well, what do extraterrestrials believe about God? And do extraterrestrials believe in God? Again, I can only speak from my experience, but the, the, the usual understanding among extraterrestrials that I have been in touch with, at least, is that there definitely is an infinite source of everything, and that infinite source is intelligent. Um, in other words, it's not just some energy. Sometimes people have that idea that God is just an energy, or God is everything. Um, but uh, the Quran also confirms, the Bible also confirms, Hindu scriptures also confirm. Buddhist scriptures are a little bit uh, unclear about God. Um, but both human sources, or divine sources on earth, as well as extraterrestrial sources, uh, generally agree that God, the source of everything, is intelligent, is a being, even, we could say, is a personality. Uh, Alama Iqbal, uh, perhaps the greatest poet and philosopher of the 20th century, uh, also confirmed this idea based on the Quran, that God is definitely a, an ego, he used the word. Uh, God is an individual, He's a, God is a person. Uh, God is not just some vague sort of formless, shapeless, uh, impersonal energy. So that's uh, really the only thing I wanted to st say specifically, uh, is that we should understand, if we are interested in understanding what extraterrestri extraterrestrials say about God, that at least the more advanced ones among them, they understand that God is more than just the source of everything as some sort of impersonal energy. But God must be intelligent. Otherwise, we're intelligent, so where did our intelligence come from? So we are the Institute of All Intelligent Life. So intelligent life means uh, there must be an individual who has awareness, and uh, God also must be an individual who has awareness. So that's the point I wanted to make. We're going to now look if there's any questions or comments. 
As I said yesterday in the Urdu chat, I am extremely busy these days, so I'm not able to talk too much longer, but I will take a few questions. Anwar Zeb says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam ji. And how are you, sir? I'm absolutely fine. Thank you very much. And uh, Yadmur bin Himyar says, um, Marhaba, Bak, Ya, Alan, Kisar. I guess that's Arabic. <laughs> He's also asking how I am. I'm fine, thank you. And Tayaba Zeb says, Salam, Baba Ji. Walaikum Salam, Tayaba Zeb Ji. So I want to uh, conclude the class pretty soon. Uh, today is Sunday, and uh, I'm often busy on Sunday, but today I'm especially <laughs> very, very busy. So perhaps I'll just end the class now. I don't see any questions about extraterrestrial spirituality or about God. So I wanted to give a chance for people to ask questions about the class topic. So um, I was not planning to make the class this short. <laughs> but if nobody has any questions, perhaps I will. Um, okay, we have a question from Jana Shah. Sir, how can I have tuning with such extraterrestrials? Oh, that's a very, very good question. Very, very good question. In fact, this is very, very important. We might say that because extraterrestrials, or such extraterrestrials, that is the ones who are elevated, spiritually very knowledgeable, um, <clears throat> it's very, very important to be in co contact with them. Uh, what we have called angels for millennia, um, they are extraterrestrials. They are advanced spiritually, uh, advanced extraterrestrials because they're not from this planet. So by definition, they are extraterrestrials. So to be in tune with or in touch with angelic forces is very, very important. So how can we uh, get in tune with them? The first thing uh, that almost all of them say is meditate, pray. So I advise zikr, chanting the names of God. From whatever tradition, language you are familiar with and you're accustomed to, you can chant the name of God. So Allah, or Adonai, or Ram, even Buddha, although some people think Buddha is just a man, uh, but the Buddha is also a name for the celestial Buddha, which is another dimension of Buddha and the cosmic Buddha, which is God. So the word Buddha also means God. And Ikomkar is a very, very favorite name of mine, the name that Guru Nanak used. Guru Nanak Devji or Baba Nanak was also a very great uh, spiritual teacher. And Ikomkar is a very wonderful name of God. Uh, one of my favorites is Toini because that I was taught by my extraterrestrial spiritual mother, uh, which means the most unbelievably merciful. And uh, so that's the beginning, definitely, is meditation and pray, prayer that will attune our hearts to higher realities. And ultimately, of course, God. God is the supreme extraterrestrial. <laughs> Since God lives in heaven or in paradise, so God is also an extraterrestrial. <laughs> so definitely we want to be in tune with God or Allah. All right, Tayyib Azeb is asking, is there any reference of extraterrestrial in Quran or Hadith? Yes, there are many uh, references of extraterrestrials in the Quran. Uh, of course, the Quran itself was given to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by an extraterrestrial, <laughs> by the angel Gabriel. So uh, Gabriel is mentioned. Uh, and also, the very beginning of the Qur'an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Hirabbul Alameen. So if 
God is the Lord of all the worlds, then there must be people living on those other worlds also. Otherwise, how is he the Lord if he doesn't have servants? <laughs> and there are many other uh, references. Um, perhaps the clearest of all, it's not in the Quran or Hadith, but uh, is perhaps the, the greatest or one of the greatest Muslim uh, theologians and philosophers, Al-Ghazali, he specifically said that when in the daily prayer uh, it is recited, uh, let me just, At-Tahatu ilalahi wa salawatu ya tayabatu aslam alaykum ayaha nabiyu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu aslam alayna ala ibadilais salahin. So when we say, of course, first welcoming and worshiping God and uh, praying for peace on the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and then we pray for us, for ourselves, and for all the worshipers of Allah, all the persons who are favorable to Allah at least. So all of them means, Al-Ghazali says, extraterrestrials. Also, and he specifically says that they communicate with each other and they have they live on other planets, they are communicating with each other in their languages. So, that is a very, very clear indication that uh, extraterrestrials are beings living on other planets. All right, I'm sure that if you do a little research, you can find many, many other references, both in the Quran and the Hadith, to extraterrestrials. Uh, Faisal Shafiq says, and Wahdat ala Wajud also provide the same concept. Yes, uh, there is definitely one supreme source, one being in whom everything is included, but all, all of us included and all of creation included within Allah, within the existence of Allah, we are subordinate to Allah. We are not the original supreme source of everything. So that is the real understanding of Ahdat al-Wajud is that there is oneness, but there is also distinction. Uh, God is great, Allahu Akbar, and we are small. So that is, that's actually the next <laughs> point I was going to make uh, next week, uh, talking about God as the supreme intelligence and the intelligent infinity um, but we are also related to God as the tiny servants of the great God we should not think that we are God which some sometimes people who ascribe to Adat al-Wajud they have that misunderstanding that God is everything therefore we are also God no Okay, Yadmur bin Himyar says, Very nice to see you again, gentle sir. Do extraterrestrials choose carefully who they reach out to and is based on the consciousness level of the individual having to be of higher state of mind and consciousness? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, especially the more uh, elevated extraterrestrials, the one who are the well-wishers of humanity, they choose carefully uh, more elevated souls to... Uh, communicate with and to give knowledge to, uh, trusting that those human beings will utilize that information and that properly. And uh, unfortunately, uh, even those good extraterrestrials who have chosen human beings carefully, uh, this is over the past 60, 70 years or so, thousands of thousands, maybe even lakhs, hundreds of thousands of human beings have been contacted by extraterrestrials. But many of them, uh, they got what is called a messiah complex. They, oh, extraterrestrials have contacted me. I'm so great. And they get puffed up like that. And it's So unfortunately, uh, many of those people who were carefully chosen by very extraterrestrial intelligences who are highly spiritual, even those people uh, often uh, blew it, we could say. That is, they did not do what the extraterrestrials hoped they would. Many of them did. Uh, of course, they were suppressed, and some of them were even killed by uh, satanic authorities. <laughs> but um, there are other types of extraterrestrials who aren't spiritually elevated. 
Uh, they're also satanic extraterrestrials, just like they're satanic human beings. And uh, they often choose lower intelligence and lower consciousness beings because their purpose is not to help humanity, but to exploit humanity. And they, therefore, um, they carefully choose uh, lower types of beings who they can manipulate more easily. And then finally, there are many, many times when extraterrestrials come, either to this planet or to other planets, they by chance contact somebody. Somebody happens to see them uh, when they are doing something that they didn't even know somebody would see them. Or uh, sometimes an extraterrestrial craft crashes, and whoever happens to be around nearby may see them. And if, if they survive the crash, they may uh, meet some individuals by chance. So that also happens. So all three types of things are there, where spiritually advanced extraterrestrials carefully choose uh, high consciousness people to contact, and satanic extraterrestrials carefully choose people who they think they can manipulate better, and uh, chance contact, where there's no specific choice as to who they contact, they just by some arrangement or some chance they contact somebody. Okay, Faisal Shafiq again says, the law of transformation of energy just addressed that concept. Okay. Um, Yadmur bin Himyar says, there is a hadith mentioned of the Prophet that one day a man came to him saying that he was one night at, at the desert reading the Quran out loud and all of a sudden colors and lights started flashing above him in the sky and the Prophet told him those are angels. Yes, so angels are extraterrestrials. Angels are more spiritually advanced uh, extraterrestrials. Tayyab Azeb says, so you saying that all angels are extraterrestrial, but tell me if there are extraterrestrials other than angels. Yes, of course, there are many extraterrestrials who are not angelic. Uh, most extraterrestrials are like us. They are like human beings. Uh, they are not spiritually highly advanced, nor are they very satanic. They are just ordinary people, uh, good, bad, indifferent. So all different types of extraterrestrials are there. Some are angelic, and some are satanic, and most are in between. Uh, so there certainly are many, many different types of extraterrestrials. Interestingly, most of them look like human beings uh, in you know, basically look like human beings. Some are fairly different, but almost all have two arms, two legs, uh, and a face with eyes and ears and, and nose, more or less, or uh, and a often a mouth. Okay, I guess maybe that's enough. Uh, we didn't really have too many questions about God, but that's okay. We can talk about God more next time also, uh, as we talk about. Uh, God and the servants of God. God is the Lord and Master, and we are the servants of God. So that will be the topic for our next class. Okay, thank you very, very much. I'm glad we had some good questions and comments, and we look forward to seeing you uh, again. Actually, next Sunday, I may not be able to give a class. I'm not sure. I'm going to try to. I'm not going to be at home. I'm going to be in Canada at a family reunion. But uh, inshallah, we will still have a class. I'll try to do it. But if I don't, it may be that I'm in a place where I don't get a signal, uh, or it may be that I just am too busy with the family activities. But I'll try to come same time next week. Oh, I was just about to end, and I saw this Yadmur bin Himyar asks, where do the jinn stand on this subject? Uh, I believe that there are different types of jinn also, uh, according to the Islamic tradition, jinn are made of fire, just as human beings are made of earth and water maybe. But uh, So the jinn are also either extraterrestrials or some maybe from this earth also. So just like there are human type beings, both who belong to this planet and who are from other planets, similarly there are jinn who are from this planet as well as from other planets. Okay, then Tayyab Azeb asks, how can we be closer to Allah? <laughs> wow, that's a very, very important question. That's perhaps even more important, the most important question. 
So Allah, as the supreme extraterrestrial, the same, I would say, the best way to get closer to Allah is meditation and prayer. So, and uh, of all meditations, I always recommend just zikr, calling on the name of God, whether you want to contact angelic extraterrestrials or uh, the supreme extraterrestrial, Allah, uh, zikr is the best way. Just Allah, 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 Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Or Adonai, 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 Adonai. Every religion actually teaches this process of repeating the names of God. Um, so Muhammad Ahmad is asking, please do zikr. I just did. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. So zikr Allah is the best way. Just calling on the name of God from whatever language and tradition you may uh, come from. It doesn't matter. Any name of God will produce the same result of uh, getting closer to Allah. Okay, thank you very, very much. And please uh, be happy. <laughs> the more we understand about God, the more we understand about spirituality, uh, whether from extraterrestrial source or not, uh, we should become happy as we understand because God is the supreme friend. So the more we learn about Allah, the more happy we will become. And the closer we get to Allah, the more happy we will become. So be happy. And may God protect us all.